Hello, Carl here with the eighth installment, eight of ten installments for National Moth Week 2020. Um, this is what we do in the COVID-19 pandemic. Anyway, um, what I would like to do today is just introduce you to one of the resources, the internet resources that I use almost on a daily basis. Um, and uh, that's Moth Photographer's Guide, which is just a wealth of information. Uh, that some of you may be familiar with and probably most of you are not. I'm just going to walk you through it by trying to identify a moth that I found this morning. I photographed it this morning. And I'm going to turn the camera now on the computer screen. Like that. And uh, what I have here on the left is uh, the, uh, the the page for the uh, um, North American Moth Photographers Group. I see it's based in Mississippi Entomological Museum, Mississippi State University. It's got quite a menu here. You can go to contributors pages and I'll read all about that. I pull a lot from John Davis's uh, 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 records here in the uh, Pacific Northwest. Uh, and uh, when I was in the Midwest, I pulled from Nolly Schneider's uh, uh, archived images. Uh, but anyway, um, if you look at the index here, um, if you go to plate series and you click on walking through the moth families, this is a good introductory way to begin to identify a moth. This is a very different way of doing it than using uh, lap snap or the field guide to laps uh, that Andre um, Porminski, uh, Porimsky uh, has put together or um, the eye naturalist. Um, this is the hard and old school way of doing it. Um, if you um, look here we're faced with uh, five major groups of plates, the micromas, a couple of plates of those, uh, and you uh, look at the number of images that we've got. So there's probably over 600 images of micromoths, and it goes on and on and on. And these are just summarizing plates. You're going to see here, you're going to get overwhelmed pretty quickly. But uh, this moth has this particular shape right here, and so it looks a lot like these moths down here. And so it's probably in the family Noctuidae. Remember, the shape is very characteristic for certain families. I'm going to click on this plate, and, uh, and we've got another menu here. Um, and uh, what we've got is a family, and we've got some subfamilies here. Um, the you know, taxonomic classifications. Uh, look at these uh, here. We've got fast, slow, and spread. I just want to click on spread to show you that we can see these moths as pin specimens, which show the hind wings. And professionals really use the um, spread specimens to try and identify moths, because some moths can only be identified if you see the hind wings, and many moths can't be identified unless you even dissect them to look at the genitalia, uh, so there, uh, or even uh, DNA barcoding, so it gets very complex pretty quickly. But if we're working from photographs, um, this is uh, uh, one way to do it. I'm going to back up here to um, to um, uh, the site that we had. Let's see, here it is. I'm going to go to fast and um, I'm going to uh, click on region and I'm going to click on the Pacific Northwest because that's where I'm from. So the computer is automatically uh, uh, cropped, so to speak, uh, from all of the images all over North America and just now showing me images from the Pacific Northwest, okay? Uh, if I wanted to select a region again, I could go down to the state of Washington, uh, which is right here, and it will crop again and show me just the images that are found in Washington. Let's just work with Washington, make it simple right now. Um, so what I want to do is I want to take my image that I photographed this morning of this moth and I want to try and match it up with one on Moth Photographer's Guide. So uh, what I'll do is I'll scroll down through these images and I'll try and match uh, um, the image on my right with the images on the left. You can see that this family, the Noctuids, um, come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Here's some green moths, but you can see it's not a very good match for any of the moths that we uh, 
see here on the screen. Notice that this uh, black coloration or pigmentation runs all the way across the dorsal surface of the moth, and that doesn't seem to show up in these specimens right here. Uh, another green moth. No matches yet. No matches yet. You get pretty fast with this after a while. Um, one of the neat and ancillary advantages of using Moth Photographer's Guide is, look at I'm becoming familiar with some of the moths in my own state. And I haven't even seen them yet, but they're there in my mind. If you go through this site several hundred times, you're going to subliminally pick up some information about moths that you're not even aware of and you're going to be learning the whole time. This is the old school way of doing it. Plus you learn some of the taxonomy along the way. I'm still scrolling through some of these Noctuids and I'm looking for a good match. Um, and getting closer. Hmm, I'm getting closer. These two look kind of interesting here. Um, and this one in particular. I see that I'm in the genus Lacinopolia. Uh, that's this group, group of moths right here that are found in the state of Washington. And this is probably a pretty good match. The coloration is not very uh, identical, I'd say, but by and large, there's a lot of variation within a species. So I'm going to click on here and see what I got. Uh, it's pretty good. <clears throat> According to the Moth Photographer's Guide, it should be found in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, so that if I was looking for this moth in Minnesota, yeah, it probably wouldn't be a good match, okay? Down here below, we see some examples of variation within the species. My particular example is more brightly colored than any of these examples, but we can expect that. Um, if I go up here to Pacific Northwest Moss, I can see, on, I'm at another site now, I can see a map that shows the distribution of this species within the state of Washington, where I'm at. And so it seems to be pretty common at east of the Cascades uh, uh, range. Uh, I see the flight times. Well, we're in the month of July here, so this is when I would expect to see it. And uh, I see species that are similar to this. Here's another one, uh, uh, Hecatera, uh, which is uh, uh, also common in our area, but it doesn't have any of this green uh, to it. And then I can read all about this moth, the habitat, the distribution, the life history, and, and what I might confuse it with. So this is a really wonderful site. I'm backing out of this site now, and I'm going to the Bug Guide site. Bugguide.net is an Iowa state-based site in Ames. And I'm clicking on the data, and I'm seeing, well, this moth is found uh, here in the in the western states. Uh, so if I go down to Washington and I click here, I can see examples of it as it's found in Washington. And I see a pretty good match right here. Um, so I'll call that up and I'll say, yep, yeah, that's probably it. This is uh, Lysinopolia strigacolis. And here's an example from July 24th. Uh, what is today? Uh, today is the um, 23rd. So uh, two years ago, uh, uh, tomorrow, I found another species, uh, another example, I should say, of this species. And here it is, right on time. And uh, look, I had help identifying this moth from Lars Krabel uh, 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 on that day. So this is how I use the site um, to identify moths. Um, Many of you will use your cell phones and FG Labs or iNaturalist to do the same sort of thing. But uh, this is the old school way of doing it. I'm going to click out of here now and uh, we'll call it a quits. Thank you for watching.